welcome to Flory Models Daily Vlog here. We are on Monday the 18th of January 2016 and been pushing on with the Terminator. Now I know I said I'd have part one of the MIG up, but to be honest, I am that far away from finishing this, complete with said tracks that have driven me mad, which I've done. If you watch the build, you'll understand about that one. Uh, but basically, uh, we are almost there. So we've got some great photo etch going on with this kit. It's a kit that I'm having troubles with. Um, we spoke about before, obviously coming on the back of Meng, and I don't want to go down that route again because it stirs up a complete hornet's nest, but the quality of the kit doesn't seem as good. Now I've built Meng before, uh, as you know, this is my, my third or fourth build that I've done with Meng, never had a problem, but I'm finding I'm getting bits of ejector pin uh, interfering with things, which I'm not normally used to with these kits. I'm having to find myself cleaning out uh, ejector pin areas and things like that. It just seems to be as well, the plastic on this kit doesn't seem to be their normal standard. Now I know some of you have mentioned that the brown plastic is of a higher quality. It seems from the green is very reminiscent of trumpeter uh, and armor and things like that. But I have to say, when it does go together, it's no problem at all. It's just these little niggly bits of flash as well, little compressions. So as I said, a bit strange with that one, but generally it's coming together really, really well. As you can see, we've got the aftermarket uh, guns on there, automatic cannons uh, fitted onto it, which, you know, I think are better. They're definitely a different size from the actual kit ones uh, and all the rest of it. And I just love the, the machine work on gun barrels and things like that absolutely fantastic with the flash hiders and stuff like that I think are absolutely fantastic so we've got to get the missiles onto that a couple of little bits and pieces and then we're ready for doing the mine plow system on the front so literally I've just got the mine plow which I do believe must be on a frick on its own because we're running out of parts so it must be all of this we can get that fitted onto this one and then it's ready for paint so that was the idea to it and what I'll do is I'll put that to one side get going on the actual uh, the MIG and we can push forward with that so the first part of the MIG I'll start it tomorrow and then that will be up with you on uh, Wednesday so part two of this is up now gonna cover pretty much all the lower hull work down to about here and then the next part will obviously carry on doing the actual upper turret and everything else as I said it's one of those things just be careful when you're doing it uh, check your just bits of ejector pin uh, that seems to come through I don't know if we've got any parts here which would have it I think we're all on there now but generally just the backs the ejector pins sometimes have a little bit sticking up a couple of swipes with a sanding stick and they're absolutely fine no problem at all but until then you can get real fit issues with it so just be a little bit careful with that the track itself I have to say starting out with it I was thinking oh god this is why I hate armor uh, but when you get on a roll with it, no problem at all, goes together. And I must admit, it took me half the amount of time to do this one than it did the other one, okay? So really sort of cracking on with that one. Again, a couple of guys mentioned in the forum, a little tip is don't do it all in one because it's boring as hell. And that's what I did. So what I was doing is I would do a bit like this when it was drying, get over one, make up a you know, small section or go through a fret. To be honest, I've still got one little fret to go. That's the last one. Uh, and then no problem at all. And you can push through with it really, really straightforward. So there we go, that's that one. Okay, so part two is up on the site of this, so you can see that right now, okay? So basically, I asked on Friday, as Friday's question was about your stash. Not so much the stash itself, it was more a case of uh, why we buy kits um, and why do we buy multiples of kits? And let's face it, you guys have not failed me at all uh, and you've been putting up pictures of your stashes and it's amazing the guys who have got massive stashes and we're talking over a thousand kits don't post up photos I wonder why that is is that a slight bit of cringeable embarrassment that actually Christ that brings it home when you've got a photo of something it's like you know if I took a picture of my stash uh, you know I have people come in here who are not modelers and they say cool that must be worth a bit and I'm thinking, you don't even know the half of it because some of those kits down there are 150 quid, things like that. So, you know, they probably think they're not worth that much. But, you know, as we know as modelers, kits are extremely expensive, especially in the large scales. Uh, and everything else so you know the question really was why do you do it and multiples and everything else so the big reply going through just general things of this one was saying about doing them in different schemes which I can relate to because obviously F-18 Hornets things like that uh, so that was that one so I can understand why you've got multiples of the same thing so you can do a little you know display in them in different schemes as I say did it with the Hornets and it really looks impressive okay so I can really relate to that short run okay so we all know we've always been in that thing of saying okay 
I'm gonna buy, get this kit, I'm gonna get this kit, and then all of a sudden you can't find it and they go for stupid money on eBay because it's been discontinued. Classic example, I was after a Harrier GR7 or 9 uh, for the an RAF Harrier. Could I find one? Could I hell? Because they were going for stupid money up on eBay. I know Haskell now re-released it and all the rest of it, so they come back again. But when I was after one, no hope. Okay, unless you're gonna pay silly money for it, I must admit I don't do that. Uh, it seemed cheap okay that was the other one you're seeing stuff on eBay uh, and it's like oh, that's half the price uh, of what retail is things like that so it seems a bargain so you have to go out and get one uh, another popular comment was me it's my fault because I do reviews and that and then you will go out and buy it uh, or I'll build it and you think I'm gonna do that as well one day and you'll get a buy it. so I'm guilty uh, it's my fault uh, the other one uh, it's a medical condition okay yeah you're all hoarders in a nutshell uh, and that is the thing now I have to admit as well I have uh, my stash you see behind me you don't see all of it because I have another stash I call it my reserve stash upstairs all right so this week what I'm going to do is when I do the walkthrough I must admit I need to tidy up this crap everywhere around here um, and I'll have a tidy up to make it look very professional for you and I'll take you upstairs so you can see my other stash um, and you guys who haven't been here in the last month or two I don't know but behind my door where my airsoft stuff was that's now kits piled up halfway up the wall as well now um, but little things I see and I'm I'm guilty of that thing of like you know you go on a website and uh, you know the latest kit is out and you think oh that looks nice classic example was this now I can't blame you guys because it was the kit buyers club um, a couple of you put in an order when this one came out and I thought oh really nice this is a classic example of me doing it as well because I saw you guys we had two of you uh, order these in last week and I was like oh yeah I've got to get one of them but it's 124th and I said to you guys the other week I'm not building anything big I'm not building anything big and what have I done I bought one of them now I'm not building it straight away, but I was like, oh, I've got to build one out because I'm going to do that. When? I have no idea at all. So don't think, you know, when you see a review of this, don't think he's building it because I'm not, okay? But it is one of those things you think, oh yeah, oh yeah, great. Another classic example of that was, was this guy came in. <coughs> um, I had it on order uh, and all the rest of it. And then obviously we had a big enough order to put in uh, for the Kit Buyers Club. So it came in with it. But again, it's one of those things. I'm doing it as a review, but also in the back of my mind, I've always wanted to do one of these. But when am I ever going to do it? So this is the Airfix Sea King. This is the jungly uh, with the HC4 type. It's the new tool one. And obviously we'll get a review of this up in the next couple of weeks. But again, it's one of those ones where it's going to go straight into my stash because I will build it but I just don't know when actually I'm going to build it, all right, and things like that. So, you know, from my point of view, I am as guilty as everybody else, and my stash is growing and growing and growing. Uh, and as some of you know, I had a stash before, but for one reason or another, I had to sell it all. Um, so actually, my stash, you might think, oh, he does this as a living, and um, obviously with the Kit Buyers Club, and all those things like that, um, that it will be massive and extensive and all the rest of it. Well, as you say, I had to get rid of it all, and I've only had this stash now started again from nothing, literally nothing, and it's out of control already. So I think I am down with, uh, so what groups would I put that in? Um, me to blame, yeah, because I'm my, you know, I'm my worst enemy, quite frankly. Uh, I think I am a hoarder because I see these things and I think, oh, they're lovely uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, I am terrible for if it's cheap. So if I see it, uh, a kit that I know is cheap or seems a bargain uh, and everything else, then I will tend to buy it. So I am guilty of that one as well. Uh, and also I am that thing of like, you know, kits when they're available, I will buy them so certain kits I've got down in there that I've got an inkling are going to be discontinued or for one reason or another I'll go out and I'll get the only thing I don't do um, and this is where it becomes a little bit of a problem uh, if I knew that no there's a new kit coming out you know for instance classic example is the Victor Tanker obviously we know Airfix are doing another one uh, if I had one I would sell it now because the, you know, there was a classic thing of that, that um, I don't know what it was, 10 years ago, you couldn't buy uh, the Matchbox Victor Tanker in 72nd. And they were going on eBay for like, so I saw one of them go for 120 quid once, so I was watching it, and it was like absolutely ridiculous. But normally they were going for like 50, 60 pounds and all the rest of it. Then Revel reboxed it, and everybody was like, oh God, and all the rest of it. So I was guilty of buying in kits that I think would be worth more money, and then all of a sudden, somebody either releases a new kit and it supersedes it, so then all you've got is kit collectors that might want it, but generally folks won't, and you get lumbered with them. What I tend to do now is, 
I see this happening and I'll offload it quick and I'll get rid of it. So I might just stick it on eBay or something else uh, and do things like that. But yeah, what I'll do is I'll say this week, when I've had a quick tidy round, either Wednesday, Thursday, uh, I'll give you a full guided tour of the gaff and uh, well, talk you through the stash and why I've got it and what I intend to do with it. So there we go. That is about it for today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with uh, obviously all your fantastic stashes, quite frankly. Uh, some of them are completely out of control and you need help. So I think we'll have a new support group called, you know, hello, I'm a hoarder uh, and do it that way. Anyway, my question for today is, do you have a plan for some of these kits? Okay, so from that point of view is, um, in my mind, which is like a bit weird as we know, but I intend to retire at some point. When I retire, I'm gonna build sort of for me, uh, and I want to do certain collections of things. Now, this was something I've had in my head recently, uh, but one of our members who also has commissioned me in the past to do quite a few models um, was spoke to me last week about he would like to have the entire Sukhoi family uh, built for him as a commission uh, and all the rest of it and as I pointed out to him he's a fair modeler why don't he just do it himself uh, and all the rest of it but anyway he basically wants to have a collection with all the Sukhoi family from I don't know I had it written down here from, just as an example, yeah, the SU-7 right the way up to the SU-35, okay, from all the jet aircraft in there, because we know there's some proppy things, um, stunt type planes, things like that in there, but basically it is going to be the 7, 9, 11, 15, 17, 24, 25, 27, uh, the 31, 33, 34 and 35 versions of this, okay, uh, and then he's obviously thinking then after he's done those, wants the MiG ones as well to be part of a collection. All right, so I can understand that. And as I say, he's got a lot of the kits himself and I'm talking to him about it and he wanted to know if I would be interested in doing some of them. Anyway, my question is, have you got a little plan in the back of your mind for your stash that you would like to do a certain thing? So perhaps similar to that, you would like to do the entire Sequoia family in 148, which would look very impressive with them all lined up. Have you got a plan for doing like another commission idea for all the F-18 Hornets, you know, to have every Hornet and every single marking uh, done, you know, and that's basically, it goes on for miles, okay? Um, or if you've got something like airliners, you know, perhaps you want to do the Airbus family in a different type of scale, or perhaps it's sci-fi, perhaps it's armor all the different things perhaps all the british tanks you know uh, that have ever been since world war ii or even from world war one to present day do you have something in your back of your mind that's doing that little thing saying we really must get on with because we're running out of time if we ever want to complete this so yeah that's here what your big plan is have you got a plan is it to build a 70 second scale nimitz class carrier like that guy did on the internet and all the rest of it do you have something burning in the back of your mind not only do i think it'd be really interesting but it'd be very inspirational to other members who think that's a good idea i'd like to do that and everything else so there we go. I'm going to leave you with that little thought. Okay. So there we go. That's it for today. As I say, hopefully I'm going to get the mind plow thing finished on this and then I can get going on the MIG uh, and everything else like that. But in the meantime, you take care. Watch part two of that one and I'll catch you all tomorrow.